Thank you for tuning in to Locked On Bulls. On today's episode, we'll be talking about Trey Young saying that he thought he was going to be a Bull and what it could have meant for the Bulls' future had the Bulls drafted Trey Young instead of Wendell Carter. We'll also be talking about uh, Josh Minton and the Bulls scheduling a workout with him. Could he be the draft pick for the Chicago Bulls? And then lastly, we'll be following up our episode yesterday with the most disappointing <laughs> Chicago Bulls of all time. All that and more on today's Locked On Bulls. You'll never find. <laughs> you are Locked On Bulls, your daily podcast on the Chicago Bulls, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you for tuning in to Locked on Bulls, where it's your team every day. Um, a member of the Locked on Podcast Network. I got those things switched around, but you guys know what I mean. That's Pat, the designer, host and creator of the Windy City Breeze. What's going on, brother? What's going on with you, my guy? We in this mug, man. You already know. I'm CEO Hayes, host and creator of Chicago Bulls Central, where I cover the Bulls every single day. Now, Pat, Trey Young was on our boy Stacey King's podcast, uh, the Give Me the Hot Sauce podcast. I'm going to do a direct quote here. Uh, he said that uh, he had an exciting and fun pre-draft workout with the Bulls. He knows what the city brings and basketball fans and said that he thought he was going to be, he was convinced he was going to be a Chicago Bull. So I'm going to throw this to you, man. That was the same draft we drafted Wendell Carter. That was, that was the, what, the second of, uh, t- of, of, of our three seven round, seventh uh, overall picks in a row. Uh, how do you think the Bulls' future would have been different had Trey Young been the pick there? To pair with Zach Levine at that time. Uh, <clears throat> Should have got Michael Porter Jr. I'm sorry. Um, sorry. Get stuck in my throat sometimes. <laughs> um, pause. Anyway, uh, <laughs> what would what would our future be with Trey Young and Zach Levine? That's an interesting question because, right, like, clearly our backcourt has zero defense at that mm-hmm. point. It's still Jim Boylan. You're still running a terrible defense. You're still running a terrible offense. Could we say even the, is Trey Young a good enough talent, right? Because there's a lot of things in on the offensive end that Trey Young does excellently, but mm-hmm. on the other side that Trey Young gets exposed on defensively, but Atlanta does a good job of hiding him. Can mm-hmm. we say that we might look at Trey Young completely differently because of how much of a liability he would have been on one side of the court? Absolutely. Especially when you look at him being next to Zach Levine, right? Especially at that at that time, Zach was some of his worst defense. Um, but well, they were playing good. man and like not switching. They were like, yeah, get that, over that. that. Get over that, that screen. That too. <laughs> that too. But but like like you said, and I love that you pointed that out, is that the way that Atlanta is built, it really is built to cover up a lot of Trey Young's uh shortcomings. No, no, and that's not a diss towards his height, but it's it's it, it it's built to cover that up and maximize the things that he does great. Now, one could say that would Trey Young and Zach Levine be so good offensively that it that it counterbalances that? Because at that point, you're looking at Splash Brothers East easily, but they don't have the defense that that Clay Tom they don't like Clay helps that work because he's so great defensively and Steph isn't anything to shake your head at defensively either. Neither one of Trey Young or Zach Levine really have that. Are are they a system breaker? That's the good like I think mm. Zach I think Zach was, right? Like Zach scored yeah. 27 points per game. Or, or, and what no no last year under Boylan. This would have been year two under Boylan, right? Year yes. three under Boylan year two under Boylan. Two under Boylan, I believe. Zach, I, I we know for a fact, right, that Zach Levine 25 points a game. He he broke that system because literally that system was not set up for the Bulls to play good offensively. Um does Trey Young do that same thing especially when you're not doing a lot of high screen and roll, especially when you're not doing right because like you think about it like a lot of the stuff that they did with Trey Young even, you would have liked to see them do that with Kobe White. And true. we didn't really we didn't use Co- Kobe White in that way. Mm-hmm. So like would Trey Young have come out and been that same level of player I don't know. I I don't know. Like, I think that players, like, I think now you would have seen Trey Young turn into the player that that we'd hoped he would have been. But I don't know. I think Trey Young would have been hampered by how poorly the Chicago Bulls were coached. 
And it's not yeah, a slight yeah. to him. I think he would have played, but and even right hampered. What's Trey averaging this year? Like he averaged like thirty point three, just about something like that. Or twenty. Sounds about right. He, he, he was one of the highest scoring players in the NBA. Like hampered could mean like Trey Young's averaging twenty twenty to twenty two a game. But when mm -hmm. you think about Trey Young, this is a guy that could put up forty five fifty just like Zach Levine can. I. It would be tough. It would be tough. I will say this. I think you feel better as a Bulls fan if you see Trey Young and Zach Levine in working with a younger core than maybe we do now because we've gone all in with DeMar, Vooch, and Zach, and two of the three of our core are older. Now, now that would have been the team. Bobby Portis would have still been on the team, so technically he would have been our starting center at that point next to Larry Markinen. Yeah. Um. That's still when Laurie was a pretty good rim protector as well. Like, that's before Laurie fell off defensively. So I'm trying to think of the makeup of that team. Who was our three at that point? Was that still Otto Porter? Jr.? No, because we got Otto Porter when we sent so him. So our starting Bobby. lineup would have been Trey Young, Zach Levine. Our three would have been – did we even have a three? I mean, at at the three, it would have been – I really I can't, can't remember. Who it it might. It, I think you're right. I think it was Otto Porter. No, because we got Otto Porter in the Bobby Porter's trade, so it wouldn't have been Otto. That's Porter. true. I have who's no been? idea who, who Paul was Zipser. Either. Paul Zipser, who we high been, on. It would have been Paul Zipser, right? Okay, that's even. What more year is that? What year? Let me. We can figure that. Twenty. That's the 2018-19 season. Twenty eighteen Chicago Bulls roster. Wow, it just pulled up scores. I wish it hadn't have done that. <laughs> um, so you're talking about oh yeah that is right uh we're talking about Shaq Harrison uh we could have had <laughs> remember remember 2018 technically Carmelo Anthony was on the team and oh, we immediately cut him uh so it could have been Melo <laughs> um you ended up having uh Wendell Carter Shaq Harrison Justin Holiday. hmm did we, did, we still, did we still have Robin Lopez at that point? We did not still have Robin Lopez. Bobby okay. Portis, Larry Markinen, uh, and you know what? Who probably actually would have gotten a ton of minutes on that team as well, Chandler Hutchinson. Mm. Mr. One Man's Trash is another man's treasure out the NBA. Okay. So yeah, looking so at So not that, good at the three. Or or if you wanna if you wanna expound it out, yeah, a Walt Lemon Jr. coming off of the bench. Don't worry about it. Yeah. Uh, the Bulls, Bulls <laughs> legend Walt Lemon Jr. Um, man, that's it's just that that's just really a difficult thing to project out because the coaching was so bad then, right? So the bad. roster wasn't it's not like we had AK and Eversley to where the roster even made sense. Like that roster was so unbalanced and did not make sense at all. Um Jakar Sampson. Like, ooh, that. Yeah, that I just I wonder if that would have stunted Trey Young's growth. I I really do ask, and and to me, right, I think the cream will always rise to the top. So I don't think Trey Young would have been a bad player, but I do think that wait, we would was that the Jabari Parker season? Uh, not yeah, because we sent Jabari Parker with Bobby Portis to Washington. This is the 2018-19 season. Jabari Parker's not. On, oh no, he is on the roster. Yeah, that, it would have been Jabari Parker. Oh, geez. it would have been Jabari Parker. Oh, geez, we would have got cooked, brother. That's so it would have been it would have been Z Trey Young, Zach Levine, um, anybody. Denzel Valentine really at the three could have been yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Jabari Parker at your four, probably Larry Marketing at your five. And I I did miss it. Rolo is on this team. Rolo is so is Rolo, Rolo is on this team. So Rolo at the five, Larry at the four, Larry Jabari four. off the bench. Yeah. Man. Or Jab or Jabari coming in, Lowry off the bench, one or the other. No, nah, Lowry was Lowry was I, fir firmly the starter. That I will Lowry. say, I will say this though: with mm -hmm. that lineup, you probably see the Chicago Bulls not move on from Lowry marketing because you wouldn't have made the trade for Vooch. Well, that's because so, so far think, down the line, though. If Lowry still would have had his, like, we didn't make that trade for Lowry until for. I mean, we didn't make that trade for Vooch for two more seasons after that. Yeah, but you would think, right, like you're going to have Trey Young on the team. Trey Young's going to perform at a decent level. Like, I don't think oh, he would have been. Oh, because we traded Wendell Carter for We Vooch. traded That's Wendell you, Carter. Yeah, there you go. You're no, actually I, I don't, that I don't much, think. Yeah. I don't yeah. think he would have been a terrible uh, uh, player with the Bulls, right? So I think that you would have had Trey Young playing 
playing decent. Zach Levine playing pretty well. You feel good about your backcourt, maybe not defensively, but offensively. Yeah. At your three, Denzel Valentine, that's all up in the air. At your four, you've got J- Jabari Parker. You probably still move on there. Or, no, probably starting Bobby Portis there even. Mm-hmm. Um no, because that's because we got Rolo. So Bobby was still coming off of the bench. So you probably would have had, or you make a move to go young there, right? You move on yeah. from Rolo, they, and you make a move they, to go young. But you, or they still I'm, move because they move Jabari and Bobby. Maybe at that point you keep Bobby. That's but you what move I'm saying. Jabari, but yeah, but I think there would have been more commitment to stick with your young draft picks in that situation. Yeah. And now the question comes in: Is that the better situation? Because we've seen in this league, like. If you've got great youth, it works. But if you got the Oklahoma City Thunder, you still lose a lot of games to get the second pick of the draft. Which team would that have been? Yeah. Now, we're going to present that question to you guys, the listeners and the viewers. What do you think the Bulls' outlook how, – how different would this Bulls team be right now had we drafted Trey Young – and he fell, fall, fell to us instead of drafting Wendell Carter Jr. It very well could happen. All it would have taken really is Atlanta Hawks drafting Colin Sexton instead of Trey Young, and then Trey Young probably would have fell to us at that point. And there was a lot of there was a lot around that because of Trey's size. Yeah, there was a lot around that so, because of Trey's size. So yeah, let us know down below what you guys think on that. But next in, next up, we're going to talk about the Bulls scheduling a workout with Josh Minton and what that could mean if he ends up being the pick, if he even ends up staying in the draft. We'll get into all that. But first, I got to talk to you guys about Bill Bar. And so we've been asking, and Bill Bar delivered. Bill Bar granola bars are here. Bill granola bars come in three unbelievable flavors. That's chocolate peanut butter, chocolate uh, coconut, and white chocolate berry. Listen, I may have to get some of that white chocolate berry. Uh, <laughs> Want to try all three flavors? You can get a mix, mix box at built.com right now. These are so different from, from the bars and the puffs. Built granolas are loaded with granola, obviously. It's the perfect combination of crunch and chewiness. But just like bars and puffs, these babies are packed with protein and covered in 100% real chocolate. Listen, the fact that Built Bar is able to cover everything in 100% real chocolate and keep the, the, the nutritional value of what it is, because let's go ahead and go over that. 150 calories, 15 grams of protein, and only 4 grams of sugar. Built, uh, built Granola Bars will change your world. Built has cracked the code to better granola. They're perfect healthy snack to pack in your lunch, take on the road, and eat as a snack. And they are made with collagen protein, which your body absorbs more efficiently and provides a ton of health benefits. So if you've been waiting for a healthy and, del- and delicious granola bar to hit the market, this is your time. Held to bit Built dot com right now to get the built granola bars three delicious flavors go to built.com to get built granola bars now and use that code lock 15 to get 15 percent off your order that's lock that's promo code lock 15 to get 15 percent off your order at built.com all right hi my name is robert schwartz whoa what the hell this is for (laughs) hey Hey, shout out to robert schwartz (laughs) (laughs) Oh, oh man, listen. I love it's it never, here. Never, never, never a dull day around locked on never. bulls, man. Uh never. Just never. Uh all right, next up. We gotta talk about it. Bulls have scheduled a draft workout with Josh Minton. Now, this is another another guard. Well, the guard slash forward in this. A lot of what we've been hearing as far as people that the, the Bulls have officially like took in meetings with or or viewed, had workouts with, have been that guard slash small forward area. Josh Minton, 6'8", 205 pounds, projects to be a shooting guard slash small forward. I, I, I really don't see that small forward for him, not at, not at his slight not at frame. That weight, not at yeah. that weight, 205. Yeah, he's going to get cooked. Yeah. Um, unless he can put on some weight. He, he's 6'8", six, six, with a 6'11", wingspan. That's nice. He's a solid athlete. He finishes above the rim. He, they say he has some good three-point shooting. We, that wasn't reflected in his college um, <laughs> game. Game? But apparently, <laughs> he's a solid three-point shooter. Some of his weaknesses do, do include his slight frame. He's not too quick laterally. Um, he gets pushed around. Again, with that size, that makes sense. Some of the shooting guards in this NBA are very big and strong. Yeah. Um, and they say that the the way that his body is built with the the width of his shoulders, they don't expect him to be able to put on too much weight. Um, again, that remains to be seen. What do you think about Josh Mitten, Pat? Um, a, <clears throat> another guy that to me wouldn't make sense for the Bulls just based on where the team is at. Right, like if we get to the point where we're looking at Josh Mitten. Um, I'm assuming Zach Levine isn't signing, and we're hoping for potential at that point. Mm. Um. He he averaged six points a game. 
didn't get a ton of time right. And here's here's the there's there's the tough part to gauge is like how do you expect these guys to extrapolate out four or five years down the road, right? Because mm -hmm. Zach Levine was off of the bench. We see what kind of player he is in the NBA right now. It's not to say that these guys off of the bench. I think Paul George came off the bench, didn't he? Yeah. Paul George was off the bench. Like, off the bench, playing fewer minutes doesn't mean you're not going to translate at the next level in the NBA. But it means that you're going in feeling like either this guy's intangibles, nobody saw what he was, and we're going to develop that into him perfectly, or you're expecting a project that's going to be a couple years down the road. Um, like you said, he from the three-point line, he doesn't really fix an issue for us there. Uh, only shoots at 14%, but he literally takes 0.1 to 0 0.4 threes per game. Um, so he's not pulling three-pointers often. He, he's pulling them at a less rate than DeMar does. Uh, <laughs> and But it, here's the part that does get you excited, right? And this is, for me, a player that I looked at who, even though he started on uh, that FSU team, Devin Vassell, when you looked at his game and you watched him, you were like, hey, man, he make half his shots, though. Mm -hmm. One out of every two shots he takes, he makes. So that part kind of gets you excited. But at this point, <coughs> I I think you're talking about a project possibly with Josh Minton. Now, I guess you do like the intangibles, right? 6'8", 205. Um, I, 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 I wouldn't go with it. I wouldn't, personally, because I, I don't know if that's where we're at. So his per 36 minutes are a little bit more <clears throat> promising, but per 36, as we've said before, I want to be clear here, they're not always an indication of what you're going to get. Um, but Cristiano 16... Felicio ain't 25 and 12? <clears throat> Dang it. Listen here, bro. <laughs> and I think per 36 minutes, too, Tony Bradley's like a 10 and 10 player. Uh, so, yeah. But 16.2 points, <laughs> points 9.2 rebounds, and two blocks per game. Now, the thing that's been – and I'm going to throw this out here, right, because we've talked about the player. This, this again, I'm a I'm a conspiracy theorist. I'm putting on the tinfoil hat here for a second. Almost everybody that we've heard the Bulls interview or God. set up meetings with projects to be a second round pick. So the 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 the, the, the conspiracy theory that I'm throwing out there. What if the Bulls are trading that 18th overall pick? And they're getting a second round pick back in return. And that's why they're doing their due diligence with all these younger players who are projects. We would lose it though, right? We would only lose the pick if we trade for it before the draft. Keep in mind, during the once the draft starts, the the team technically drafts their player. You would have, yeah, you would have to have the team draft the player. And the, and then yeah, and then the then so why would you why though? You know what I'm saying? Like it depends on who they're getting back. I, it still doesn't make sense though. Like, I mean, where where's he slated to go? He's he's deep in the second round, though, ain't he? Well, right. So the, he technically of, hasn't declared, which you technically can't even really he can see still it. yes, yeah. But some, so he's not even listed on every mock because yeah. he's not officially declared. But on some of the mocks that he's listed at, he's as high as the thirty third overall pick, as low as the, as low as the fortieth pick. I I don't. Even as a second round pick, I feel like he's unless you feel like you gotta feel great about him, right? For me. Cause cause there's nothing about what I'm seeing. Even the games, like, of course, there's not as many games where he's taking a lot of shots. When he does mm -hmm. take a lot of shots, he's shooting it 60% here. Uh, what do we got? He shot 60% versus I don't even know what school that is. Uh <laughs> <laughs> but here's what I will say. I want to throw this out there, too. So in a lot of 2023 mocks, because a lot of places didn't expect him to declare, and he very well may go back to college, maybe this is the Bulls taking a look at him early before next year's draft. Maybe something like that. But next year's draft, he's slated to be a top 14 pick, a lottery pick easily. Could he be, and I know we don't think about it like this in America, could he be a, like you said, a go after him, maybe you get a, that I don't know what the trade would be, right? You get a player and a late second round pick. Could he be a draft and stash in a G League kind of player if you feel like you want to just develop him? He could be. Remember, Anthony Simons was that, yeah. right? Yeah. Anthony Simons, they very much so kind of stashed him around in the G League, believed and knew that they had something special, 
and they let him stay down there for about a season, season and a half before they yeah. brought him over. Do you – here's the bigger question, right? The one thing that I will say is we've heard the Bulls work. We're going to workouts, watching this guy, watching this guy, watching this guy. Mm-hmm. We've said what we feel like the Bulls need as a big man, center, all that. We haven't seen them talk to those guys. Not we've once. seen them talk to guards, guards, mm-hmm. guards. Does that for you underlie a bigger concern about what the ba- what what the Bears say? A lot of concern. <laughs> what the Bulls feel about possibly Alonzo Ball? Because we've seen them go after looking at guys that are six two. We've seen mm-hmm. them looking at guys that like Josh Minton's a forward more so. He'd probably be a backup for P. Will at some point. But not that that's like, not that that's not a that slight frame. He's a, he's still a guard, bro. Not at 205 pounds. He's not backing up, he will. Well, he probably gets to 215 in the NBA. I usually give dudes 10 pounds of muscle. They okay. usually end up adding on 10 pounds of muscle. 6'8", 215 ain't bad. It's still slight, but it's not like you the skinniest dude in the league. He's not Derrick Jones Jr. Okay. Yeah, you know I'm saying like Derrick. <laughs> what was he? He was 195? No, Bro, that was Brandon Ingram, wasn't that it? That was Brandon Ingram. Yeah, yeah that's crazy, dog. <clears throat> so, hey, hey, Brandon Ingram's the one dude that's literally stole off somebody in the league. That's crazy. <laughs> I don't know. That that's that's my question with it, right? Does it does it speak to a more underlining issue with the Bulls? It may, or it may just be speaking to the fact that they want and very well too. They may be looking. They may have their first round selection picked out. Maybe they are going to trade for a second round pick, keep their own first round pick, but they're going to let that team make the draft pick. And then they do it that way, like because the Bulls don't have a first round pick next year. So maybe they are looking yeah. at, hey, who's somebody in the second round that we may be able to stash and get something out of? You know because what? we don't have. You know. I didn't think about that. Yeah, they don't have the first round pick next year. Maybe they're trying to double up and find yeah. a diamond in the rough this year to make up for the fact that you don't have a first round next year. That's a good point. That's a yeah. good point. Yeah. So let, let us know again down below what you guys think about this Josh Minton thing. We're going to go ahead and now we're going to get into our last segment for today. And we're discussing the most disappointing bulls of all time. <laughs> Listen. All right. <laughs> Where do we begin? <laughs> hey, man. The comment section on this one is probably going to be lit. Um, I don't know how you do want it. You want to just list off all of ours? Do you want to take it, go back and forth once, uh, one after each other? How do you want to go about let's, this? Uh, I mean, listen, there's there's so many ways to go on this. Um, let's go back and forth on it. I'll let you go first. All right. I have no no problem with that. Um, going first, I'm just going to mention the one, and uh, this is one of the most recent disappointments. It's Tyrus Thomas has to be on my list of the most disappointing Bulls of all time. When you look at trading away a a perennial All Star in Lamarcus Aldridge for Tyrus Thomas and Victor Carappa, who who even knows who the hell Victor Carappa is anymore? I do because I know the trade. Yeah, but oh god, that is just and I and I and I at the time I understood it right. Tyrus had an amazing um, <clears throat> tournament that year. But man, did that really change? And but look, I'll say this: if we draft Lamarcus Aldridge, we probably we probably are too good to get Derrick Rose. That's okay. <laughs> it sucks, right? Like you, yeah. it sucks that you don't get the Chicago kid. But how many kids from Chicago have we not gotten? This is true. And I love the D Rose years, but let's be real: like if we're winning, <clears throat> I feel better about it. And LaMarcus Aldridge was a dominant force in the NBA. You go find pieces to put around him. And at that point, 2008, no, what was that? When did we draft Ty? Uh, Derek is that was 2006. That was 2006. That was 2006. Yeah. Kobe was almost ready to leave, and you would have had LaMarcus Aldridge on your team. Mm. You'd mm. have had to get rid of Lou Aldang and mm. half of that bench. But I've seen mm. Kobe win with weaker power forwards. Listen. Just saying. LaMarcus Aldridge and what his career ended up being and the fact that Tyrus Thomas really only stayed in the league, what, five, six years maybe? Yeah. Um, yeah, man. <laughs> the amount That's... of players we can do this with is sad. Oh, <laughs> uh, so here's mine. Still stings. Hate it to this day. Ah, uh, in the year 2000, your Chicago Bulls drafted one Marcus Pfizer. Who? And after his second season, which we can call a uh, 
breakout season where he averaged 12 points per game, shot at a solid 17% from the three-point line, and had five rebounds and uh, one assist, the Bulls realized that, you know what, boys? I think we've got our guard of the future right here. To the point that when 2003 came around and his numbers went down, but because he had had that before, they just couldn't part ways with him mm. in a trade for one, also Chicagoan, Dwayne Wade. Because he was the fourth overall pick in the draft and we had to stick with our guy. Marcus Pfizer is probably the most disappointing bull for me because instead of going through a 12-year drought, we would have gone through a solid four-year drought, got another Chicagoan in here who would have been dominant. Oh, by the way, at the two-guard position, that actually grew up a fan of the team. Mm. Yeah. 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 That one hurts. Marcus Pat Far Riley really wanted Marcus mm. Pfizer. I don't know why. Yeah. <laughs> Marcus Pfizer was also on my list because he has to be on any list in regards to that. Um, definitely disappointing. Since you already took Marcus Pfizer, I'm going to go with another one. This is This is a deep cut. 2000-2001 season. Uh, Mr. Excitement. $32 million contract. You know who I'm talking about, right? Eddie Robinson. Why did we Come do on. this the last segment? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, let's, let's, let's listen. Uh, just to go over Eddie Robinson's uh, uh, career totals. Seven point, not career totals, but totals as a bull. Seven points per game, two rebounds per game, and about... 15 minutes and 67 games each season. Yeah. <laughs> and, while, and, yeah. and while 32 million for a five year deal doesn't seem like a lot in this in current NBA, keep yeah. in mind this was before the two huge salary, the 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 salary cap increases that that uh the revenue sharing deals that the NBA got. That was a big contract back then. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh, he was breaking the bank with that mug. Yeah. He was killing the game with that mug. I might be able to top you. Okay. If, if Or bottom. I don't know. <laughs> this player here came over with so much hype, so much fire. He was the best player in the league that he was in. We thought he was going to be our Luka Doncic. Uh-oh. I think I know where you're going with this one. I'm pretty sure you do. <clears throat> we thought he was going to change the game for us. We thought he was going to be the one piece that if added to the Chicago Bulls was going to put us over the top. And instead, he was just a piece that was here and played basketball. That is uh, one Nikola Mirotic. Mm. And by the way, he was such a thorn in the Bulls' side or at least Bulls fan side, right? Very up and down player. But he was good to give you a month. He was always good to give you a month. The problem is, when the Bulls were heading towards being the number one team in the lottery, he had a month. That year that he did that, the next season... By the way, a month where the Bulls traded him, his best month probably of his career. Uh, and for that for that time with his with the Bulls in 25 games, 16.8 points per game, 6.4 rebounds, shot the ball at 42% from the three-point line. <clears throat> uh, the next season, yeah, Luka Doncic came out in the draft. Mm. Who would you rather have? <laughs> We should have tanked that season. That's so <laughs> oh, we were. We yeah. were, except for the month of December. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to raise you one foreign prospect for another foreign prospect. Oh, God. Here we go. And the reason why. You know what? I'm going to double up on this one. Because double they came up. together. The fact that we have this guy named Zach Levine right now that everybody's thinking he's going to sign a, a max contract with the Chicago Bulls come back. But he was probably the third target on that trade for the Chicago Bulls. You know why? Because Chris Dunn, 
who they would have they the Bulls would have openly traded Jimmy Butler straight up for the season before. And then Laurie Marketing, the finisher. The people who they thought that Laurie was going to be the one to get the Bulls back to the promised land had an amazing rookie career for us. Had a pretty solid sophomore season for us. And then guess what? It all went away. Listen, Laurie Marketing, the, the, fact that, the fact that Chris Dunn, the Bulls were so high on him. That, hey, that should have been why the damn front office was fired already. Like, you were so high on a player that – Never showed competency to be an NBA player. Yes, he was he was great defensively, but that's not enough to keep you. And then Laurie Marketing. Those two players are very disappointing because listen, the Bulls really thought that they had some of those two players. Zach Levine was a throw in in that trade. I I agree. Laurie <clears throat> Laurie was disappointing, but I will say, if we both agree, and I think that we did, that Trey Young would have been hampered by the coaching that happened, mm -hmm. do we have to give Lowry a little bit of a pass? Not to say that he's the player that he was his sophomore year. Sophomore year, 18 points a game, nine rebounds a game. Like There was a reason we were feeling good. Yeah. After that, 14 points a game, had some injury, only played 50, never played a full season. He still hasn't played a full season. Um, But do we have to give Lowry some leeway? Like, do we? Is Lowry, again, a wait-and-see player? Because he's not under the thumb of Jim Boylan. Oh, yeah. Everybody. It's just like when Matt Nagy's offense <laughs> in the in Everybody. The Bears. <laughs> Everybody gets the buffer because of Matt Nagy. Every bull that came up gets a buffer because of Jim Boylan. Like, every Wendell Carter gets it. Larry Markinen gets it. All of them get that buffer. Look at the way Daniel Gafford, right? He came back down a little bit to earth this season. Yeah. But once he got to a competent coach, it really does change some things. So, yes, he gets a little bit of a buffer for that. Go get Chris Dunn back. I, I don't know. Listen, no, 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 see no, if we get him. No, no, you're not. No, no, yeah, no, 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 I'm good on that. We got we 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 have the best version of what Chris Dunn should have been now in Lonzo Ball. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> we really I, let's be real. We really thought that's what we got. Yeah, we really did. We really like at yeah. at a certain point there were. I know I was like, dog, like he's like what you want in Lonzo Ball. Chris Dunn should be able to give you that. You know what got me about Chris Dunn, though? Chris Dunn, I was I was never disappointed by Chris Dunn. The part that killed me about Chris Dunn is Chris Dunn really thought he was that dude offensively. But you I, do you remember <laughs> that towards the end of his first season here? I remember he went on a run. Another player who had a great month. A where great he month. he averaged like 16 and 8. I don't remember that. Oh yes, bro. There was a, there was a stretch there where Chris Dunn averaged like sixteen and eight. Maybe it wasn't the first season, but it was it well, was one well, of the seasons. No, nah, thirteen points a game. He had to have a, a high scoring output at some point in there because I know he had some lows. Forty two percent from the field, thirty two percent from three. Yeah, that's about right. Yeah, two steals a game. That's what. I'm, listen, defensively, Chris bro, Dunn is nothing to shake your head at, bro. He's never. Bro, he averages a steal and a half in his half career. For his career, yes. Bro, go get Chris Dunn back. How old is Chris Dunn? He can't yeah, be he's older 28. than twenty eight, right? Twenty eight. Yeah, we got Javante Green. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if he was younger, I'm like, go get Chris Dunn. Like a little bench point Listen, guy. Chris Dunn in 15 games with Portland this season still averaged a steal and a half a game. Yeah, no. Defensively, he's not that bad. I ain't mad at it. I don't, I don't know. Out of out of everybody we said, who's the worst? With all the implications attached to him, who's the worst? Answer that in the answer that in the comments below as well, man. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Hey, this, and make sure y'all leave a comment, man. The comments help us. We're trying to get to be in the number one uh, Bulls podcast, not only on YouTube but also on the net. Yeah, we also, you know, we didn't mention Eddie Curry. He could have definitely been on a lot of lists. <sighs> Eddie Curry. Yeah. There's some name, bro. It's sad that we got this. All right, let's get out of here, bro. Yeah, it's man, sad that it's this many players. PTSD, bro. We it's got this PTSD. many players that we really can go to that were let down, bro. Like, that's crazy to me. It's wild, fam. Oh, wild. Man. Let's but shout out, out to the players that we got that out that outshine when we thought, like Javante Green. Shout out to the John Salmons of Chicago Bulls history. That just with a John and Salmons. That's with a go. John Salmons. That's how we got to end it, bro. We got to talk about <laughs> the guys that we thought were going to be nothing, and they end up turning into really nice players. Yeah, you know I'm saying go. we got John Salmons on a deal where we thought Hakeem Warwick was going to be the better piece of that. 
Yeah, I mean, yeah, well, Nate Robinson, shout out to you, brother. We got you on some like, ah, we need another short point guard to come off the bench. C.J. Watson is gone now. <laughs> One of the best single season bulls of all time. I feel like if they had brought him back, he'd have been decent, though. The Bulls well, no, remember he tore, his, he tore his ACL that offseason. Oh, that's true. And that's why he didn't get a deal. That's and then Denver signed him. Back. Yeah. yeah, that's why. Yeah. Yeah, that's so. true. There you go. Hello, he's, he's, Doc. He's my old friend. He tore, he tore his ACL doing something crazy. It was like dribbling and like literally dribbling on the street and he tore his ACL. I don't know. That's just crazy. That's, anyway, that's, go ahead, bro. That's go ahead and give it to him. Let's get up out of here. Hey, man, follow me on everything at Pat the Designer. I know you was talking trash on CBC. I went back and saw what you said. <laughs> and I'm still going to say that's at P A T T H E D E S I G N E R. Now I'm saying it just because I know it irritates you. Yes, I did go to public school. They taught me how to spell. Also, follow us on everything at Locked On Bulls. Acting like it's like <laughs> nine hours. Bro. Like, come on, bro. <laughs> I said we changed me. the name of the show to Pat the Designer and Locked On Bulls. Oh, this is what we're doing? You David roughing in me now? Okay, I see how it's going. You can follow me at CEO Hayes, at CEO H-A-I-Z-E. Thank you for tuning in to Locked On Bulls and making this your first listen of the day. Now for your second listen, go and check on Locked On NBA, where the Locked On experts take you deep inside the playoffs with insight and analysis affecting all 30 teams. They're available wherever you get your podcast. But that is it. For Pat the Designer, I'm Hayes. We out. Peace, y'all.